So I would now like to invite him to tell us more about your personal story and what got you here. <laughs> In the name of God, peace be unto you. Good afternoon. Thank you for inviting me here. It's such a great honor to be among all these great leaders and students. I feel gifted for getting this opportunity to speak at Harvard. I must confess that I had never heard of Harvard till 2004 when I was doing my MBA from Indian Institute of Management, Bangalore, the number one business school in Central Asia. We studied Harvard case studies in our classrooms. I always had this dream of building a business wherein that get listed as a case study in Harvard one day. And that day happened last week. Let me tell you where I come from. I come from a very, very remote village of South India, a beautiful state Kerala, with full of lagoons and backwaters. My father was not very, very educated. He's a daily wage worker who had a dream of making his kids educated. Times were hard for us. Having a breakfast was a luxury during my childhood days. I had to walk miles for my school. Three-time meal was a distant dream during my childhood days. Today, as I stand before you in Harvard, I'm very sure that my father will be the happiest person in this world today. <laughs> After my engineering, in 95, I worked with a few MNCs in India, Europe, and Middle East. Seeing my first month salary, my dad cried because he had never seen that kind of money in his lifetime. I then co-founded ID Fresh Food along with my cousins in 2005. Today, ID is a $100 million brand. serving world's best breakfast, idlis, to a million Indians. <laughs> to a million Indians every single day. For those of you who don't know idli, idli is a <laughs> white, fluffy, hot steamed rice cake <laughs> served, with, served with delicious coconut chutney. I request next time in the Indian, India conference, please serve idli. So how did this school dropout village boy started a breakfast company worth a $100 million brand with his cousins? In the next 15 minutes, I will share three short stories with you. And I hope these messages will help you in your journey to become entrepreneurs. So here goes my three messages and three stories for you. My first story is about a disruptive innovation, the story of Vada. We helped mothers to make world's best idli at home. Vada is a crunchy deep fried snack. It looks like a savory donut, circular disc, right, with a hole in the middle. Vada goes best with idli. In, in South, we eat idli dosa as our favorite breakfast. Kids love Vada, and it's a great snack too. But it's also the, one of the most difficult snack to make at home, except for grandmothers. <laughs> what has started disappearing from Indian homes, including my home? So there are two significant challenges in making vada. The first challenge is to get the vada batter right. Even if I provide vada batter to a homemaker, she still won't be able to make vada at home. It's a messy job. Vada batter is as sticky as a super glue. The second challenge is to make vada from the batter. You must be an expert to make vada. I mean, the perfect vadas. You can't get the size right. You cannot get the shape right. 
and South Indians will not eat vada without a hole. <laughs> when I talked to ladies in my office, they were pretty happy to make vada at home if I give them the vada batter. But they had no idea how to get a hole for the vada. <laughs> and most importantly, the new gen, like you, will end up frying fingers rather than frying the vada. <laughs> so we wanted to help all mothers to make world's best vada at home. This is a century-old problem. We identified it. We then started working to solve it. We talked to industry experts, including engineers from the world's best schools. They were notable helpers. We then used something called common sense <laughs> to solve a homemaker's problem. And our solution is ID's new vada pack for you. Helps you make homemade vadas that are shaped, sized, just like expert-made vadas without you touching the batter. And most importantly, with a proper hole in the middle. <laughs> And that too, 100% natural, no chemicals, no preservatives, nothing artificial in it. Now it takes just one minute for you to make vada at home. But it took us three years to build it. We didn't lose hope. It was not an easy journey. Many in the team suggested dropping this project in between. But we were pretty confident about it. I'm sure you're all curious to know about this magical vada pack. Vada making is a science now. It is not an art anymore. Let me show you how it works. This is no ordinary snack, a South Indian speciality. It's a favorite in homes across India, but its circular cylindrical shape and donut like hole make it fairly difficult to prepare at homes. It needs the expert hands of grandmas and aunts or even restaurant cooks. Not anymore. ID decided to turn its attention on this age-old problem and transform the complex art of vada making into a science for everyone. And the key ingredient? Common sense. A path-breaking little big invention. The spout that shapes batter into vadas with the hole. And that's it. Squeeze, shape, cut, fry. Handmade, but with no mess no stress. Just delicious crispy vadas. ID, maker of India's favorite batters and fresh food presents Vada Batter in a pack that shapes batter into vadas. Now everybody can vada. This video was actually created for this event. It, it got leaked and went viral <laughs> last week. We launched this product in, the bank, in Bangalore market last weekend and it was sold out in five minutes. Techies, like many of you, call it 3D printing of Vada. <laughs> World call it innovation. We call it common sense. Because Common sense is the most important ingredient for innovation. So my first message to you is look around, identify such opportunities, and use common sense to solve it. That's the best way to build a business and stay ahead of competition. My second story is about compromises and shortcuts in life. All of us have a tendency to take shortcuts. That's natural. This story happened in the summer of 2008. We had started ID and were doing a crore revenue per year, which is around 150K dollars. As the case for any startups, it was extremely difficult for us to meet both ends. I had quit a well-paid job and was drawing a very small salary from ID because ID could not afford to pay me more. We needed money to stay afloat. It was very tough for me to live in Bangalore with such a small income. We didn't want to take 
interest-based loan as it was against my ethical philosophy. The only option was to sell more products using the available vehicles. So we started trying some new products. And one of them was called chili-flavored savory bite called Diamond Cuts, something like nachos. It was doing OK in the market. One day, I got a call from Taj Hotel. The chef wanted, wanted to buy thousands of cages of diamond cuts from me. It was like a dream come true situation for a startup entrepreneur. My biggest problem at that time was to live in Bangalore with such a small income. It was a profitable deal, which would have helped me to take home a salary of a lakh rupees per month and meet my monthly expenses. We were seeing light at the end of the tunnel. I was talking to chef to better understand the usage pattern so that I can go and pitch the same product to other large hotels in Bangalore. This is what he told me. We are unique. We, are, we want our customers experience a different taste. We tried ID chili diamond cuts and loved it. We want to use it as a bar snack. Bar snack? I was confused. I imagined my product in a bar counter, sitting next to a bottle of beer and whiskey. I asked myself, am I promoting liquor business by any chance? Is that the right thing to do for me? I talked to my partners. We debated. On one side, I had a huge order solving my immediate problem. On the other side, I had my ethics. Business was conflict with my, my value system. It was a very tempting situation to take the shortcut and say yes to them. We asked a question to ourselves. Do we want to be an assistant to a chef in a bar, or want to be an assistant to a homemaker in a kitchen? We didn't want to be part of the liquor industry. Our ethics were not aligned with the liquor business. It was not an easy, easy situation. With a broken dream, we decided to reject this order. I felt like crying. I felt crying, not for losing this order. I felt crying, thanking the Almighty God for giving me the courage in the, the toughest time of my life. <laughs> Looking back, this is one of the best decisions that you have taken in ID. It helped us to focus in India's fresh food breakfast market, rather than becoming a contract manufacturer for a company called Taj. We didn't compromise on ethics. We avoided shortcuts. We built a business following our Indian value system. I'll be proud to narrate this story one day to my grandchildren. I know how, how easy it is for all of us to take shortcuts in life. Deep inside us, we want to reach somewhere faster, easier. In that journey, we end up making compromises. Will you be proud of that in future? So my sincere request to you is avoid shortcuts. Do not compromise on your value system. My final message is about the trust. How many of you believe a product which comes in a packed form is healthy? Any packaged food? OK, just two. How many of you tried ID? How many of you, how many of you believe ID is natural? This is a common issue. Anything packed is considered as unhealthy by, by Indians, especially. <coughs> ID was also considered as a packed food with chemicals and preservatives and artificial flavors. My problem was that I had to build trust with my customers. So to do this, we tried a very innovative campaign. What is the best way for someone to trust you? Trust them so that they will trust you. We set up unmanned ID coolers in apartment complexes. We kept all ID fresh products in those chillers. There was no salesperson, no technology, no cameras, no vending machine, no security on the cooler. 
There was only one person watching from the top, the Almighty God. Customers were expected to open the cooler, pick the product, deposit the money in the money box kept next to it, go home and have a healthy breakfast. It was purely based on trust. Customers were very surprised with this campaign. They couldn't believe it. It got us a great brand mileage. Our campaign video went really viral. We had actually better sales and better profitability than a retail store from these stores. This idea was rated as the best ma food marketing idea last year. We, then, we were actually trying to build a brand which touched touch our customers on the heart, not just on the tummy. So my last message to you is be the change you wish to see in the world. If you want someone to trust you, you first trust them so that they can trust you. Let me summarize my messages. Look around, identify burning issues, and use common sense to solve it. That's the best way to build a business and stay out of competition. Do not compromise. Avoid shortcuts and stick to a value system. And finally, trust your customers. If you trust them, they will trust you. Take a leap of faith. It is such a coincidence. Today, a young boy was a school dropout who started working as a daily wage worker in a remote village of Kerala, and for whom having breakfast was a distant dream. He's now running a food company that serves world's best breakfast to million Indians every single day. It happens in India. India is a great place to do business. Do come back. Before I... Before I end my speech, I would like to leave you with this final message with a video. It's a tribute to the most important person in our life. Hi, Ma. My food is eaten. My mama meeting is just about to start. Oh, okay, okay. Uh, good luck, my son. Eat food, okay? Okay, Ma. Talk later. Bye, bye. Sorry, guys. Hi, Ma. Hi, beta. Work done? Yeah, Ma. I'm going out, Abhi. Beta, you have to eat something, right? Yes, I'll eat something. Okay, bye. Hi, Ma. Breakfast kya na, Adi? I'm running very late. Hmm. And oh, I won't be coming home this weekend. Bye. Uh, but... <coughs> <coughs> Hello, Adi. Hi, Ma. Why are you calling so late? Did I call? Ma, I'm very stressed at work. I can't talk right now. Anything urgent? Okay. He showed that you can do anything. I called you so many times. Why didn't you pick up? I've been sick, bitter. Ma, you've been sick and you didn't even tell me. I didn't want to disturb you. Ma, I'm very stressed at work. I can't talk right now. Anything urgent? Ma? Hmm? You've eaten food. Thank you. Uh, 
Uh, yeah. If this series is called Inspire Series, like your story truly inspires. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you for the truly inspiring talk. Now I really want to eat a vara by the end of it. Uh, hello. Hi. Can you yeah. hear me? Yeah. Uh, I, I, uh, I, couldn't, I couldn't control myself, actually. Uh, uh, let me tell you, uh, I belong to a JAT community, and I consider myself a very strong guy. And I'm the person who uh, participate in obstacle races like uh, Spartan race and uh, Tough Mudder races. But today is uh, Mustafa, uh, your inspiration and your v video about mom that really make me emotional tonight and uh, i really miss my mom today and thank you so much for that and i would like to come over there and i would like to hug you right now come 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 <laughs> Before I start, can I just say one of the most inspiring stories I have ever seen? Mustafa, everyone needs to stand up and give a standing ovation to this man. What a guy. What a guy. What a guy. Dude, God bless you. It's, it's people like him who will make India the great country that we are capable of be becoming. What an honor to share the stage with you. Seriously, man. God bless you. God bless you.